So the question was asked, um, how do I set up my tables? What do I use? Okay, so this is going to be just a short video explaining the method I use to prepare my table. Now, um, um, obviously, the resources people have to create their own wargaming tables, uh, wargaming tables will will vary based on budget and skill of modeling and all this kind of crap. Now, I'm not a very skillful modeler whatsoever. I can paint a little. I can I can touch up and, and titivate um, buildings that I, I that I might purchase, but making buildings from scratch, yeah, I've made a few. Um, it, I find it time consuming, and I'm not that good at it. So I buy a lot. Now I use a lot of foreground buildings. Now uh, they are the, like the Rolls Royce of model buildings, uh, MDF kits that you can get. Um, they do cost an absolute fortune, however. So um, what do I do? I troll around and I buy them secondhand. And if you go to war game shows and conventions and the like, you know you might be lucky you can find some. Or you can just simply go on some of the various Facebook um, uh, buy, swap, and sell pages. I run one myself, the Australian uh, Historical War Gamers Trading Post, and that's specifically for Australians because postage is a real killer for us uh, living here at the bottom of the world. Um, so I get mine second hand, um, and if you shop around, you can do that. Uh, the other thing is there's a couple of companies that I deal with. Battlefields Accessories are fantastic, uh, and so is uh, Lasercast here in Australia. So they're the two ones I use most mostly. So Mike Parker and Tim, uh, Mike Parker at Battlefield Accessories, Tim at Lasercast, they're my go-to guys for additional terrain and stuff. Um, just a little shout out for the guys that, um, for for the companies that have um, provided uh, such awesome uh, service to me. The mat that I'm using, this is a neoprene mat that I got from Battlefield Accessories. Uh, Mike Parker was kind enough to send me one and um, I think they retail for about well, maybe a hundred Australian dollars. The reason I like the neoprene one will become evident as I show you what I'm doing here. But it, it really is a, a nice mat, and you can you can actually it's one of those rare neoprene mats you can actually drape over terrain to create hills rather than sticking a hill on top of it. Okay, so um, first thing I always do is based on the scenario, I print out the mat and I grid it in one foot squares. If the scenario designer has already done that you're a legend all right because it makes setting up the table so much easier but if they haven't it's not a problem you print the map up you divide it um, into one foot squares and away you go okay so the map on the table I'm making currently is for the game that Rowan and I will be playing next Tuesday um, um, it is from uh, the Abbeville pint size campaign and this is uh, table red three, which is the flanking Ashon Franlau. Ashon Franlau. I don't know how that's pronounced. I'll, I I will find out how it's pronounced because I'm big on that. But this is the the scenario that we're playing, and I simply printed off the map, and uh, ta-da! There it is. Okay, so. First thing I do is lay down the, the the mat that I'm going to be playing on. I use cigar box mats, they're fantastic. But um, for this one I'm using the Battlefield Accessory mats and I use that for the last two games that we've played um, on the on the on CYL TV. Then what I do is um, I I lay out the, the major terrain features. In this case, um, the obvious dominant terrain features is the large building, the road. This is actually a railway line or a, a light rail line, tram line. And so I, I lay them out. And once I get them right, if I've got them accurate, and I, I strive to make sure I've got that accurately down, then the rest is all just in it's all just relative. You know, I just okay, that's scrub, I've got to put scrub along there. So what I'm using for scrub is uh lichen. I would recommend if you're a war gamer, uh, and you 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 and and let's face it, most people play miniature games for the aesthetic quality otherwise you just play computer games or board games but so go to any uh, hobby shop uh railway modeling shop some war game you know friendly local gaming stores will have it get a bag of lichen it's it's just easily to throw down in this case it's representing scrub 
So there's the scrub. Uh, the road, the road is uh, MDF road that I've got from Battlefield Accessories, as is the railway line I got from Battlefield Accessories. And um, that'll, that'll easily work as my light railway. Now, I could just slap it down, and you can see there on the right hand side, that's what it looks like it's just put on the table, and that looks great. Or I can make it look a little bit more realistic and authentic. And I purchased from, um, from one of our IGAs, which is like a like cheap supermarket chain, a bag of kitty litter. And then I just sprinkle the kitty litter down alongside the, the railway line to show that, that, you know, that gravelly stuff that always seems to accompany railway tracks. You know, there always seems to be gravel and stuff and grit um, around railway lines. So I'm in the process of basically just throwing that down. So I just, you know, just grab a handful of this stuff and I just, I just take it over here and I just sprinkle it along and you go, ah, oh, but it's going everywhere. Now this is why the neoprene mat is handy. Because what I do now is I grab a brush and I simply brush it up alongside. And being a neoprene mat, it makes it very easy to do. So again, I just grab more kitty litter, and I just dump it down, grab the brush, brush it up alongside it. You get the idea. Okay. Um, then once I've um, once I've you know placed out the kitty litter to, to and and that's usually uh, usually useful for other things like little little paths you know you know you got a path going from a building to um, to a road or something you can simply just again you just drop down the and you and you can create these little little paths okay so obviously the the tram comes along here little light rail tram and this is where people get on and off you know it's all very <laughs> very french transport system is working well today and then um yeah there you go okay some other things i well, just a point in regards to cleaning up um, it's not difficult. I simply use the same brush after I've moved all the terrain off the table and then I just brush the uh, cat litter into a, uh, a receptacle. Okay, so the other, some of the other things I use to, to just to add to the, uh, the aesthetic quality of the table is um, things like telegraph poles or telephone lines, things like that. You know, th these ones I've got, these are uh, Rubicon models, um, Telegraph poles. I just simply sprayed them in a spray paint that I got from um, from the local Bunnings hardware store. Or any that's a major hardware store here in Australia. Just go to the Bunnings, grab a tin of Jasper. Jasper is a, a a color that seems to be just like a woody, earthy color. So I just sprayed them with Jasper, and then I then painted over the Jasper with Vallejo old wood. If I remember correctly, it was old wood, and then the cross beams, I used Vallejo new wood, and then gun metal for the the little uh, conductors and white for the elements on the conductors. Okay, so and you get a pack of from Vallejo. I think it's about twenty Australian dollars, twenty five, maybe thirty. You get eight of these poles, which gives you eight telegraph poles, and then you get a pile of uh, street lamps and road signs and stuff like that. So that's a really good uh, kit to get if you just want to, and that will give you enough telegraph poles and, and light and, and lamps, street lamps, and that you'll probably ever need, uh, all for the one purchase. Okay. Yeah, for some stupid reason, I said um, you get these from Vallejo, that they're Rubicon model kits, and yeah, like I said, you can obtain these, this telegraph set, uh, telegraph pole set um, from Rubicon models. They're very good. Woods. I go out in the garden, obviously I put down my model trees, but then I go out in the garden and I grab a whole pile of of just fall, deadfall. Um, I live in uh, semi-rural Victoria, Australia. I wish, I wish I was living in semi-rural New South Wales or Queensland, but hey, I'm stuck here in the People's Democratic Republic of Victoria. Um, just grab the twigs 
and I break them up, toss them around, and it just it's just a, a reminder that hey, no doubling in woods because uh, you're gonna run into trees or trip over fallen logs and stuff. And again, it just it just adds a little bit, you know, to the to the wood. Um, so that's woods, and then um, fields. Okay, cereal crops. Uh, in this scenario, I don't know. I might. This is just teddy bear fur, but the really short, uh, dense pile teddy bear fur that you can get from. We we have shops here called Spotlight in Australia, but anywhere, any haberdashery place, you can get uh, teddy bear fur. Eh, it's not too expensive, and um, that will do is one type of cereal crop. Another one, again, went to a haberdashery shop and they were selling rolls of this stuff. Uh, I think it's for, for florists or something. I don't know what purpose it serves other than making a really decent kind of lush green crop. And another option, of course, is artificial grass. You can get artificial grass for your garden, but get sheets of that and you can make, uh, again, just uh, you know, little crops that are growing. Um, so there, there's those three, and then the other one, of course, is doormat. I'll show you what doormat uh, I've used for that. Okay, so this is a fairly common uh, type of um, material people use for crops. Okay, so let me just grab some some of my French men from uh, sharp practice sets, and um, yeah, so French uh, voltages there in uh, you know, moving through uh, crops. Now, you can use it just as one big, you know, one big uh, doormat and just dump it on the table and bang, Bob's your uncle, away you go. But um, what I often do is I cut them up into sections and I'll show you why. Okay, so this is just using doormat um, as, um, as standing crops or cereal crops. And I cut them, cut them up into sections because sometimes... Um, what I can do is, once I've got the troops in the, the fields, if I'm gonna have them like stay there for a while, I can just remove a section and just place the troops in the space where the, the crops were. So now that they're, they're basically standing in the crops. Um, so yeah, that's just another thing Another option that I, I like to use when using uh, the doormat. Um, you could do the same with obviously any material, just cut it up into little sections, but um, there you go. So <clears throat> this is the, the table now completed. As you can see, I've replaced, I've decided to go with on this side, the, um, the doormat stuff. Um, And um, that's pretty much the table set for Tuesday's game. And so this is what the map looks like. And this is pretty much what the table looks like. And I think the point is that it doesn't take a lot. I mean, just a you know, $2.50 bag of cat litter. And a bit of lichen and um, you can create a, a I guess it's a reasonable looking table um, <clears throat> I think if you add little things like you know a motorcycle parked in a near a, a garage you know um, some boxes near a railway siding, you know, a street lamp, telegraph poles, um, a chicken coop out the back of the the chateau. Um, it's the little things that make can make a big difference to the appearance of a war games table. You know, um, tossing down a few twigs. Um, these don't cost anything, and it just requires a little bit of imagination, and and there you go. So that's that's how I create a table. That's the method I use. Uh, some of the tricks, well, I don't know if you call them tricks, but some of the um, 
the little things I do just to make it look a little bit more convincing. So the question was also asked recently, what, how I, where do I get the little rings that I put around my leaders, junior leaders, senior leaders, and the type that don't, so I can readily identify who a leader is? Well, these ones here, these ones here, they, they were given to me by Rowan, um, and I think he got them from some, some dude in Spain. If you buy a bag of like 40 or something, it, it works out to be quite economical. The other option is... Um, Ta -da. Uh, laser cast produces these and so basically you just you they just come um, as a wooden base and then you've got a ring on the outside you could just put the ring around the, the figure but you can get the base you paint the outside if you're really talented you could name you know write you know corporal blogs or something or maybe put the name on the bottom whatever and then you just take the NCO the leader and you just sit him in the the sabot and um, that's another way of doing it. Uh, I'm sure other companies produce these things, but I get mine from Lasercast um, because um, they're located right here in Bendigo and I can, I can put in an order and I can just, when Tim comes around for a game or whatever, I just, I just get them off him. Um, so, yeah. So uh, they're the options there. Uh, I will try to find out where in Spain Rowan got these things from. Um, uh, but the other option is, like I said, uh, sabots. Um, or just, you obviously just make sure you use a figure that is distinctly leaderish in appearance. Okay. Now let's um, <clears throat> talk about the, how I indicate shock on my troops. Okay, so there I've got a British section. <clears throat> and what I do is... Um, some people like to use dials, but I find them a little bit too big and intrusive. So I use, um, I use these things here. Uh, basically it's like a little die holder. Um, I got mine from Battlefield Accessories. Basically it's just a, uh, you, you buy the, just the little square and you can, you can, uh, stipulate what size square you want. And then that just glues down onto the... Uh, onto a base and the, I use a 25 mil round base and then I put the square on it and then um, I paint it and then I put a bit of flock now I've, I've let a little gap there because eventually what my plan is I'm going to put you know like one section two section three section or one squad or mortar team or whatever and I'll and I'll put a little indicator in there what the, the team it belongs to but you could just flock the entire base so that it's all like that and then um, <clears throat> when the unit takes a, uh, some shock I just get a die and I just drop the dice on there so they've got one shock on them okay and then um, the other team has also got a shock on them and then if it's you know they over the time they get two three you know now they've got four shock on them and so basically on the table you see that it it's not too intrusive and it's clear enough for your opponent to be able to see how much shock he's racking up on, on squads without you constantly having to say, oh, they've got seven shock on them or whatever. Um, and, and so um, from distance, you can see that's, that's how it is. And I, I, I think it works well. It's not too intrusive. Um, and so basically, like I said, they come in uh, little squares, uh, and then you just glue them onto a base, as I've done hit there, round or square. Essentially, what I normally do is I'll put a square on the the machine gun team and a round on the rifle team. Um, if I need to add more, um, if they go like seven shock, then I just place down another one, and um, and so on and so forth. And that's that's basically. Um, my shock markers, and that's how uh, I'll, I'll display shock on the table.
Um, so uh, that's it. I'll wrap it up there. Um, and this will be the table that we'll be fighting on. It's a, um, a flanking action. So basically the, uh, the British will be hunkered down in this corner of the table here. And the Germans will be attacking from over there and um, through the, the cereal crops there. Bye for now. This video was brought to you by Lasercast and Battlefield Accessories, suppliers of quality MDF terrain and all manner of products that you, the Wargamer, will require. Thank you for your support, Battlefield Accessories and Lasercast.